All right, so if you're not using Git as a developer, it's not just risky, it's almost borderline unprofessional. And here I'm speaking from experience because when I got started, I didn't fully get the benefits. And to me, it always felt almost unnecessary or just like too much overhead. So let's have a super quick look at why Git is so important and also what the best workflow looks like. We just need to understand a few key concepts and let's get started with what might be the most important one, the commit history. On GitHub, you can find that right here. And the commit history is kind of like taking snapshots of all your project files, why you work on them or why you make changes. Now, this is extremely powerful because first of all, you document all your changes. So if you work on multiple projects with multiple clients, it becomes very easy to switch between projects because you know exactly where you left off last time. And having all the changes documented is also very helpful if something breaks because then you can prove whether or not you made these changes, which can be interesting in terms of liability. And we can also easily roll back to any previous version. So it's like having continuous backups. Yeah, so just from a security standpoint alone, using Git is extremely important for brands. And you'd be shocked how many companies are not utilizing this. Uh, we had a great example of this in our bootcamp just two weeks ago. So one of the members was going through the training and then he realized that the million dollar brand he's working with was not even using Git. And then he moved the code base over. And this is awesome because if you catch something like this, if you realize the clients or the brands you're working with are not using Git yet, you can call that out and explain it to them in the exact same way that I just explained it in terms of like security, having backups and so on and so forth. And this is really the type of initiative that makes you stand out as a developer and that can help you when you negotiate your salary or hourly rate next time. Now, the other major benefit of using Git is how it makes collaborating in teams a lot easier. So this is going to be relevant if you're looking for full-time positions in agencies or other tech companies, because there you will likely work in teams and then they expect you to know this. So let me show you what problem Git is solving here specifically. Uh, we can take a look at a very relatable example. So let's just imagine we would be in high school or college and we would have to write an essay yeah, with a friend. And let's just imagine you would be starting the document and writing the first half. And then you would send the document over to your friend because she's supposed to, let's say, write the second half, but also fixes some of the errors that you've been making in the first part. Now, let's say while your friend was working on the document, you also decided to make some further changes to the intro rewrite it or fine-tune it a little bit. The problem we face now is that both versions are kind of out of date and we now have to come up with a strategy to manually blend these versions together or merge them in Git terms. And the only chance we have now is basically go through the text line by line and compare all the differences to decide which changes we want to carry over. And here it might seem like kind of doable because it's just a one-page document. But let's imagine these were like hundreds of code files across five team members or something. Then it would be impractical. Now, how does Git solve this problem? First, by leveraging the commit history that we've already seen. Like we keep track of all the changes that are made on our project. But Git can also do that for multiple versions of the same project in parallel. So we could have what is called a new branch. So in this case, this might be the, the main branch. And then we have a side branch here where our friend is working. And then once our friend is done with her changes, she can issue a pull request, a request to pull her changes back into the main branch. And then Git takes care of merging the two versions. And if we have a conflict, because in this example, we've both been making changes to the intro, then Git just asks us, which version or which of these changes would we like to keep? But we don't have to manually go through all the lines and check across 100 different code files or 100 different documents. And Git just asks us, hey, here we have a conflict. Which version would you like to keep? And then everything else where we don't have any conflicts gets merged automatically. Now, how does something like this look on Shopify? So the way the setup usually works is that first of all, we have the store's live theme the theme that's currently published and working. And that live theme lives on the main branch. The main branch is then connected through Shopify's GitHub integration. So all the changes that are made to this theme automatically get documented in the commit history of the main branch. If we or any other developer now wants to build a new feature, 
we would first start a side branch. And on the side branch, we would build out the feature, test everything. We would do most of this locally using Shopify's CLI. But you can also have multiple commits on a side branch if you want to keep track of your progress or yeah, have like intermediate backups or a save your state at any point. And none of this here affects the live store because it's completely detached. It all lives on a side branch. And only once everything is tested and ready to deploy, we would issue the pull request and then merge everything back into the main branch or into the live theme. All right, so if you now understand this workflow, let's say from a high level, I would say that's already 60% of it because yeah, to me, it's always very important that you understand the ideas and the thought processes first, because then you can ask the right questions. For example, if you don't have a GitHub account, you can research how to set one up. If you don't know how to do a commit, you can research that. If you don't know how to check out on a side branch, you can research that. If you don't know how to use Shopify CLI to develop locally, I should have a video on this channel. In our bootcamp, I explain this whole process over the course of eight, nine videos, and then we practice this with every project. So I'm really doing my best to compress this here for you. But as a self-taught developer, I want to empower you or enable you to analyze your own blind spots and then ask the right questions. All right, now in order to make this guide as useful and as hands-on as possible, let me just give you the exact steps that you can follow when you get access to a new store from one of your clients. So the very first thing you want to do is download the current live theme using Shopify CLI. Yeah, if you don't know how to do this, watch the tutorial on my channel. Then once you have all the code files on your local computer, you want to create a new Git repository, a new Git folder or project folder if you want. And then you just want to upload the live theme onto the main branch. Yeah, so this is the initial commit of our new repository. Then you want to set up Shopify's GitHub integration and basically connect this new main branch here with Shopify. Yeah, so the way this works is that you would go to your admin dashboard and then under online store themes, you can import a new theme and you can connect it from GitHub. Once everything is connected, you can now set this new theme as the live theme and all the changes made to this specific theme will now be synchronized both ways. Yes, yeah, so that means if someone makes a change using Shopify's theme customizer or the theme editor, those changes would be synchronized back to GitHub. Yeah, so then you would see a new commit on the main branch, but also vice versa. If you push code changes directly onto the main branch, they would also immediately be live on Shopify. Now, when it comes to developing new features, we would first check out on a new branch, on a side branch. And here we would mostly work locally using Shopify CLI and the live preview. And if you still want to push your code changes to the cloud, to GitHub, you can do that frequently by just yeah, adding all the commits while you work. But as you can see, nothing here is connected with Shopify because we're only working locally. And the side branch, the side branch we're now working on is not connected via the GitHub integration. We've only connected the main branch right here. Then when you've developed everything and everything is tested and ready to deploy, there's one optional step. You might want to have your clients preview the changes. So then you could also connect this side branch here on Shopify. Yes, yeah, so you'd follow the exact same process, import a new theme, connect from GitHub and connect the side branch that we've been working on because then your clients could come in here and preview the changes. But as I mentioned, the review step might be optional depending on what you agreed on with your clients. But then once everything is tested and once everything is ready to go live, then you would issue a pull request and pull the changes from your side branch into the main branch. And since we connected the main branch through the GitHub integration, everything would now be synchronized to the Shopify store and then the new changes would be live and deployed. Alrighty, and that's it for the workflow. I think I cut the video right here. Now you know exactly why Git is so important in terms of security and working in teams. And you also have the exact workflow and the steps you can follow when it comes to developing on a Shopify store. I really hope you learned something new and let me know if you get any questions or if you want to see a practical example, then we can also do a second part. And in either case, I wish you an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you later. Bye.